Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I thought of some other things as well. For those of you who are in panic mode, right in through here, remember that God has not forgotten you. God has not, uh, he will never forsake you. He is not crippled. He is not disabled. He's not in a cast. He's not in the hospital, get, you know, waiting for recovery. God is well able. But remember one thing. You cannot lose heart. What would have happened if the Israelites had lost heart after all the firstborn in Egypt had died? Can you imagine the heaviness in the atmosphere and the wailing of the people who did not stay within the, the, the safety zone where the blood was on the doorpost? Imagine waiting all night long, wondering if they were going to get to go or not. Imagine that. But in spite of all the death happening around them, they continued to pack. They continued to get their stuff together and they got a good night's sleep so they could get up and go. What might have happened if Jesus had chosen not to go up on the cross? Now listen to this. This was God's own beloved son who had committed no sin. All the disciples, imagine it now. All the disciples are in the upper room. They're gathering and they're mourning and they're praying and they're mourning and they're worrying and they're crying and they're fearful even for their own lives and they're mourning this heavy sorrow of losing their master. He died. They saw him die. Case closed? Battle lost? Is that what happened? How could God let that happen? How could God allow his own son to die for these good-for-nothings that were killing him? How could he do something so cruel? Why did he not send 10,000 angels to deliver him? Why did he not? Because there was purpose. He served a purpose through his death that could only have happened through his death, through his burial, and then when all hope was almost lost through his resurrection. See, his resurrection could not have taken place had he not died. Some of your blessings cannot take place until some things are snatched out of your life, till some wrongs are done in your life, so that when the solution comes, everybody knows God did that. That's God's hand. This is a miracle. Whether the people believe in miracles or not, they will when they see God move on your behalf after what has just happened. Sometimes the worst has to happen before you get God's best. Do you hear what I'm saying? There was a woman in Africa. Her husband had died. They had embalmed him. Now, you know what embalming involves, don't you? You drain all the blood out. And you fill the blood vessels with some solution. I don't know. I ain't trying to go there. Maybe it's formaldehyde. I don't know. But anyway. So this man is getting ready for burial. But the woman ain't ready to let go. She knows she serves a risen Savior. And she's not settling for anything less than God's best. And she goes down there where that dead body is and she's praying and moaning and calling on God and commanding that body to live. And she's over and over and over. And that man woke up after being dead for days. If you really believe in God's miraculous power, you won't let go. You won't let go till God blesses you. The way Jacob did when he wrestled with the angel of the Lord. And they're wrestling and wrestling. And the angel finally had to 
hit his thigh just to get loose because Jacob must have been a, a, a bad mamma jamma. And the angel of the Lord, what do you want? I won't let you go until you bless me. Do you have that kind of tenacity? Do you realize you're a child of the Most High King? God is your father. You have everything accessible to you that he has. And you have a right to call on it. Make a demand on your inheritance. Do you hear what I'm saying? Expect the impossible. Look for the miracle. Look for it. Expect it. Don't settle for a second best. Don't settle for a mamby-pamby solution that's just better than where you are now. No, God can give you his best. And you keep pulling on that till you get it. Don't you dare give up. Not now. You serve a risen Savior. And if you can serve a risen Savior, baby, you can serve a miracle-working God. Because it's the miracle work in God that caused that miracle of a risen Savior to take place in the first place. Trust God. Trust God with all your heart. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Lean not to your own understanding. I, I said it backwards. But please, trust in him. Call on him. Cast all your care upon him. He can carry it. Cast all your care upon him for he careth for you. Again, I say he can carry it. It's too heavy for you to carry. You know that. Give it all to him. And then ask and keep on asking and knock. Keep on knocking, nag, and keep on nagging, bug, keep on bugging, cry, and keep on crying, yell, and keep on yelling, call on the name of the Lord, so shalt thou be saved. Just watch and see what he will do.